Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Travis and Katie, Poetry of Tech. Really, really happy to get to read with Victoria and Anise. This is called Radiant Reflection. And commences some suddenly, some finally the music, the retrograde resplendence looking, the friends and firebrands, the dear, dear readers, luminous yard, oh, I go to the killing of everything and do it myselfish, do it hard. And there is nothing in it to hide behind but lamplight, which is God, if anything ever was, but I don't believe it ever was. So I am blue in the lost nothing and crushing a gnat without ratiocination or other rhinoceros over the grass stainy hills of the blood in this body or urine. My stomping grounds, they stop me. Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, just roses, noises, the delightful little voices we call to us in reverie, the depths beneath the surfaces of light and winged oranges, citrus scratched out to mean things. At this juncture, unsurrealistically, I would like to say, meander and wonder and wrath with a sheen on it. An air of something here or there, pedigreed, invocable. Gray chair in my living room, shiny metal legs. Gas for the fire, plants I don't water, dust. Well, to undress this self in a feathery of jets is one wish. My people want to know what's more is. And I can only shake at an angle. This one or this one. Bluebird or pterodactyl, dancing in the kitchen with pistachios and carrots, lemon coriander vinaigrette, I regret, can't remember how to spell or cast one, and I think this goes on too long in a bit witchcraft of ragged insistence, that or it's never long enough, always between heaven and earth, life is beak halves, teeth, coils, claws, when you, if you are who you say you are, think you are, ask if you love, do you wince with marvel at the time it takes to answer, affirmative, Effulgence, the sweat pouring off doubly. My heart cloud is dark at this sentence. Big mouth, bigger moth, something struggling to end it under hammer. It has come to my attention. My intention is less than glorious, sorrowful mask. I invented to invention and wear it all my life. changed everything I was going to do, like right before I came up here. <laughs> this is going to get really loud. <laughs> uh, there's a band called Jawbreaker, a punk rock band called Jawbreaker that was really important to me when I was growing up. They had this great song called Ache that begins with the line, um, I believe in desperate acts, the kind that make me look stupid. <laughs> um, this poem doesn't actually refer to that song, it refers to a different one by Jawbreaker. <laughs> it's called Poem with a Chorus by Jawbreaker. <laughs> the word is pain. And the world is pain, but the sun on our skin is enormous and light. I went out running this morning the way I always do, awkwardly with lightning. And at some point, I thought about the song Chesterfield King by Jawbreaker, which is a punk rock conversation poem in the romantic tradition if ever one existed after Coleridge and Wordsworth made it a thing, then abandoned it. The chorus goes, I took my car and drove it down the hill by your house. I drove so fast. But when it couldn't cool me down, I turned it around and came back up. You were waiting on your step, Steve showing off your breath and water in your eyes. 
We pull each other into one Parker's clinging on the lawn And kiss right there The stanza breaks are mine <laughs> I don't know why I thought about that then Or why I'm thinking about it now Except that it's a song you should know If you don't already And it has a fragility to it a vulnerability in its lion-flaming punk rock heart that reminds me of your poems and how longing never leaves us as long as we live, which is lucky and even better. I'm suddenly struck by the image of a rowboat on the sunset horizon with one lonely figure rowing into the distance out to sea. And in this image, which is really the world, I'd like to call out to the figure in the boat, to the him or the her, who is probably you or me or someone just like us, someone in need, but they're too far away to hear me or I'm too far away to hear me. And yet that doesn't mean I shouldn't scream and scream to try and get their attention because attention connects us and generates possibilities. And possibilities are the stitches that we use to close the wounds the ones that we inflict and the ones inflicted on us. Yeah, the world is pain, but attention is rich and connection changes everything when we allow it to sing us. The sun going down so light and enormous, the pink and orange waves, their marvelous chorus. I took my car and drove it down the hill by your house. I drove so fast, you took your boat and rode it out both to listen and mend. I'm standing here trying to get your attention. Longing for its own sake is a letter close to heaven. Longing and words continue the world. So this book that I'm reading from is called, uh, it's called Radiant Companion. I, I often, I find it really hard to put, uh, to put books together because I think that I write poems um, as sort of individual events. They, they, they exist by themselves. And sometimes, you know, you put them all together in some kind of a, collection and they start to talk to each other and I realized when I was putting this together that a bunch of these poems were um, dedicated to people that I that I love. I can't find this poem for some reason. Oh, there's a table of contents. <laughs> That's helpful. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, this is a poem that's from my daughter Agnes who's, who's 11 now. Um, but she wasn't when I wrote this. It's called Reaching the Awe Sound. Here and now, this blue winter sky, and outside a light frost, the windows of the houses and the windows of the cars. I walk out on the porch and my glasses fog up. I start my engine to make things warm. Voices swirl around as a white-muzzled dog trots by in this marvel of everything good morning. Back inside with the radio on, the word in the air is terrorist suspects, videos of child soldiers executing spies. I wrestle the juice from an orange in my mouth. I read the beginning of Song of Myself, the price of petroleum, a coming election, a stepped-on spear of dead winter grass. I do not loaf. I lean on the counter and call for my daughter. She puts her small self in a puffy blue coat. I put my small self in a black wool sweater. I drive her to school with the radio off. She spells words with the awe sound in them. Awesome, outlaw, walrus. Autumn divides by nines from 108. At the drop-off spot, she gets out of the car. I love you, I say. I'll be back to pick you up. And when she shuts the door, I turn the radio on. Then I turn it back off. At home, Greek yogurt with pistachios and pecans. A little honey. I drink life down to a hot cup of coffee. This soft dailiness. My ordinary yawp and drawer and author and oft this picture of heaven where there isn't any heaven is as good a place as any to begin to make a heaven. 
Either we give ourselves to a course of action or we do not give ourselves, wrote William Carlos Williams. The rest of the day, I am mostly messed up. I go on my nerve. I celebrate myself. I burn through the world with my hands held out. Heaven with the radio off. This is, I'm, these, these poems are a lot more dire than I meant them to be. <laughs> um, this is called Glitter Puss. Whatever happens, Stance, this is the real. This is already you're listening to Angel Less, the grass. Right here, right now, the white picket fencing, a black hole colliding with a Boy Scout droop, troop delivering mulch to my driveway, Cypress and enhanced platinum, but that's an entirely different experience like, when will I die? Every second and always, I will paint rack at the night with its stars of stupid breath. I will write, write, and write the wrongs of my people, my kind. 33 and a third, both to show you that I can and just to show you I can rapture. And a forest comes up out of my amazement by the roots, the hair, your hair. Why is it so suspicious, the people talking too eloquently about popular culture, the merits of mania? I want words to be matches or not to be at all, to burn us up from the inside outlandish, which is a desire. When you get to be a punk rocker forever, a chair or a missile, and preach the zombie apocalypse dystopiary sequence of events the way I have, and the people come up to you with shoes full of drool and memos full of clever sentiments like on an ACDC record, only not nearly as good or not nearly as recorded as history, the groovy, you'll know exactly what I mean. Baptism in the blood sack of doing more than a trapeze artist skimming the alphabet. The dinosaurs too used to be seraphim, I said, or I say, or I heard once somewhere. Or they used to fall asleep on God's knees and his lap was a dog of napalm. And he owned a long chain reaction of Goodyear tire stores that he used to buy in Lucifer. And a burning ring of fire went down, 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 and the flames went higher. But what's so mystifying about it is it's also a Johnny Cash song. And my life is Nilla wafers in a juice box. The truth is that most days I want to kill every single person on this planet so much with all my heart in an instant because it feels like the only way to perpetrate an empathetic entanglement never ending and then some. Often I have screamed the stripy anthem steeped in moss to prove that I believe it, though mostly I choose to play the chameleon mid-argument. These strings of associations and your collected disjunctive resistance are confetti to my ear. The sophist in sophisticated's got a slurry in a bog, a bog we made and continue to make our astringent red wine out of our brain spun cotton candy trending right now where we roll. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling along. Hydraulics, mascara, and the Second Amendment's misinterpretive dance where everybody's fired and firing. Nasty, brutish, and short. And now the Leviathan wandering the meadow of beards, all fours, the pancreatic park with its stilt-legged bears. My nerves disappear the way a nerve always does. You just go on it, throbbing, and eventually it stops or it gets so bad you pass out in the street full of taxi cabs and rain, wet, yellow, black, and a paisley covered ducks. Eventually the pain becomes a new way to love or the reason you've always wanted for your hatred to have parents. You are not me, jack-o'-lantern, Toyota truck rabbit, this head of living lettuce, radicchio, Pinocchio. What could be the clearer? Who among us has the experience to smoke bomb the phoenix and crush the apple orchard and cough up the amusement that drowns us in its glamour? Not me. No way. I know it. No way. But not you either. We are scabrous together. Oh, glitter puss, I punch the fuck out of your honey bun. Crash my holy lung into a giant white moose. I wish to be inspired, but there's never any juice. Break a nose with an orange and drink whatever runs.
I studied philosophy in college. <laughs> um, there's a point, I studied the later ph philosophy of Wittgenstein, actually, when I was a graduate student. Um, and there's a point in that book where he, he says, uh, if a lion could speak, we couldn't understand him. That's the epigraph to this poem. It's called Philosophical Investigations. A lion says a bunch of weird, perplexing things about the world. That he's a lion doesn't really matter, but he hopes some of you will know his heart from what comes next. Furthermore, that he's a king of the jungle isn't necessary, which is different than saying it doesn't matter. <coughs> What's necessary is logically necessary, or it's logically unnecessary, that is all. So he roars and roars a bunch of enigmatic technical things about the world, and about its being a bunch of facts, not things, or about its being mostly of words in some pianist's throat, or not. The possibility of the negation of any fact is embedded in the totality of facts as they present themselves, but neither the totality nor the possibility are part of what the lion says though what he says shows them in perfect relief. This he implies through singing a lot, the chaos of the soul. His singing is anomalous and sounds like polished oyster shells, feverish and reticent, as if the totality of history has already been written, potentially anyway, even before it attaches itself to the mothership garden of earthly delights. It wants to declare and conclude itself, goodness and beauty, mercy and grace, Paradise found and unmoored from what's found. But history cannot say such things, the lion knows, logically or sensibly with feeling, nor accurately scientifically with verve at little cost. One can't say feeling. One can only express it rarely, my dear, or falsely, my love, or a moth settles onto my window ledge lost. Light spilling in on the book the lion wrote. Nothing is certain. But it seems someone has leaned a ladder up against the house we don't share together anymore or much. Yes, I am here. I have always been here. I am not very far. I climb to the canopy of trees, and when I reach through their green, a hippopotamus is in the room, or a hippopotamus is not in the room. As always, this is true. And all the light that ever warmed me is fading. Rather mystically, it's blue, fading into mountain sea, with glitter gloss and lionry, silence. How am I doing on time? I totally forgot to set my stupid <laughs> clock when I came up here. Do I have time for one more? Okay. I teach at an art college. I have these amazing, crazy <laughs> students. Um, and I'm, I'm going to describe one of them in this poem. It's called Immediate Neighbors. At a final cruising altitude of 36,000 feet, I'm thinking about the chapter called The Pipe in Moby Dick, and also about my student, Sam, who memorized it in her fingers by typing it 136 times, once for each of the chapters in the book, plus the epilogue, and then performed it for the class, swaying back and forth, ghost typing the air to remember the words so that Ahab's human struggle became her own human struggle and all of us in tears as we stood there with our wonder. Tough and shocking, a fragile new meaning, but what triggered this memory, I don't know. Flying, maybe? in the air next to clouds, or this young woman about the same age as Sam sitting beside me and who's coincidentally also named Samantha, but goes by Sammy, not Sam, she tells me. She's never seen clouds this close before, having never flown in an airplane before, so she's taking pictures and can't stop chattering, popping bubble gum, shuffling her notes for chemistry. She's a chemistry major in Minnesota, she tells me, among other things, and through it all, barely listening, I'm remembering, remembering, and also some forgetting. I can't remember my first time flying, but right now I'm flying, so that's something. 
If I could only be sweeter and meaner, more voluminous, it occurs to me I could rise and then fall and then rise like Ziggy Stardust and the spiders from Mars. And then if I could write down some chemical equations, maybe take a few of you with me to paradise found or negative capability, I would love that to pieces the way I love any linguistic associations, connotation to constellation in a few leaps and bounds. The problem of the poem is to experience its ending, having already known so beautifully its beginning, by which I mean an agony of life and deathery, of music and speech, which is given for a minute, then taken away. The pipe thrown overboard and lost at sea. Sam's air typewriter, her struggle to remember, and this other Samantha, Sammy, she reminds me, her carrot juice hair and serious green eyes taking pictures of a plane from the window of a plane. The last three days in New Orleans, I've been a version of sparrows and radioactivity, and now on my way home to Cincinnati, the Samantha beside me radiates light, so radiates being. People only call me Sammy when I'm drunk, my student Sam once said to me drunk, then nearly got arrested driving home to write a poem. And suddenly, I'm vividly aware of all the secrets sitting near me, rising and falling, maybe rising against me, and I want to know every one of them. And also, I wonder if Sam will be okay with this poem. I mean, the part about her nearly getting arrested is not really my story to tell. She was drunk. I called her Sammy. It all could have ended horribly, but great fortune that it didn't. Whose story is it? What difference does it make as long as no one gets hurt? Sam's totally brilliant and deserves the world's attention, the world's massive love, wherever she can get it, but she's had a rough time by anybody's measure. Dear Sam, you have beaten the odds. You are winning. Be happy. Don't throw yourself in the drink of any ocean. Keep swaying in the breeze, ghost typing your songs. As for the title of this poem, Immediate Neighbors, well, I stole it while sneaking a look at Sammy's quantum chemistry notes, something having to do with particles and the sharing of electrons, but what do I know? I just read giant books and lift off. Chemistry is a total mystery to me. The mystery in chemistry, coffee, beer, and ibuprofen. I steal everything the best way I can, I suppose, from all my friends and neighbors, the immediate ones and some distant planets. And with that, we've begun our initial descent. Current weather in Cincinnati is clear skies with gusty winds out of the northwest at 10 miles per hour. We should be getting to the gate just a little ahead of schedule and on the ground in about 15 minutes. On behalf of both myself and the Samanthas, thanks for flying with us. Flight attendants, prepare the cabin.